Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Boy, do we have a good one, as we have been graced with the presence of none other than Chrissy Freeland once again. It's been a while since we've seen her, and uh, I think the last time major she was in the news was about the whole by-election loss, as well as uh, the rumors of Mark Carney uh, coming in and shuffling her out. Now, uh, this one, she doesn't disappoint, especially with the reporters, but she starts off making this announcement uh, here. Our government is focused on delivering fairness for every generation. This very much includes making the dream of home ownership a reality for younger Canadians and for new Canadians. And we know that one of the biggest hurdles for home ownership for younger Canadians is qualifying for a mortgage and making sure that you can afford the monthly payments that come with it. That's why in our budget in the spring, we announced that we would be allowing 30 year amortizations on insured mortgages for first time home buyers purchasing newly built homes like the condos that Kelly has been talking to us about that are part of this development. That of course includes townhomes and condos that translates to lower monthly payments so more younger Canadians can afford to pay that monthly mortgage on a new home. So right off the bat, as always, she tries to make this sound like this is groundbreaking stuff. Her budget, her policy, oh my god, what an idea that she came up with. This is fantastic. Yet if you look at the history of Canada and mortgage uh, amortization, this isn't anything new. Back in up until 2012, it's been 25 and above. But uh, actually in 2006 is when it was introduced. So if we take a look here at the history of it, uh, mortgage rates went up to 30 from 25. Then they went from 30 to 35. And they even increased it up to 40, all in 2006. Then they decided to decrease it in 2008 back to 35. And then they went back from 35 to 30 in 2011. And then that's when they decided to go back from 30 to 25 in 2012. And it's stayed like that since then. So all she's really doing is going back up again from something that we've already once had in our, in our lifetime. But if you listen to the stipulations that she has there, this only applies to new builds of condos and townhouses. So if you were to find an existing property or even an existing townhouse or condo or anything like that, it doesn't apply to that, only to new builds. And townhouses and condos are becoming less and less desirable as people realize you're just in a shoebox. Like you're paying so much money for like a one bedroom studio apartment. Because if you just moved a little bit out of the city, you could buy a whole house for probably the same amount that you would be putting down on a condo or a townhouse. But again, in my opinion, this is their whole plan to uh, get you to not really own anything and just live like uh, rats stacked on top of each other. But as the press conference goes on, she then starts to take uh, basically credit for the Bank of Canada bringing down the uh, interest rate again, only like that 0.25% that it did because their uh, fiscal responsibility. Our fiscally responsible plan has helped put the Bank of Canada in a position to lower interest rates for the second time in a row last week. Yet, if we actually listen to the governor of the Bank of Canada's announcement, he says that it's the housing situation, as they call shelter, but it's the housing situation that's keeping the inflation rate actually up. Looking ahead, <clears throat> we expect inflation to moderate further, though progress over the next year will likely be uneven. This forecast reflects the opposing forces affecting inflation. The overall weakness in the economy is pulling inflation down. At the same time, price pressures in shelter and other services are holding inflation up. We are increasingly confident that the ingredients to bring inflation back to target are in place. But the push-pull of these opposing forces means the decline in inflation will likely be gradual and there could be setbacks along the way. Like this is what she's taking credit for, but she doesn't actually lay out the full thing as if people don't listen. 
to what is being announced or what is being said. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm happy that the interest rate is going in the downward uh, direction. But yeah, they've they've done it twice now, but only by 0.25%. It hasn't even been a full percentage yet. It's only been half once you've to totaled it up. So really, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of relief, but not that much. But Freeland talks about another policy uh, budget thing that they tried implementing, which it hasn't changed at all since she originally announced it, as I'll prove it to you in a second. Lower interest rates mean that mortgage payments will be more affordable, helping more Canadians get into the housing market to buy that first home of their own. Last year, we launched the tax-free first home savings account to help Canadians save up to $40,000 tax-free towards the down payment on their first home. That money is tax-free in, tax-free out, and more than 750,000 Canadians have already started saving using the first home savings account. And it is really important that for young people, that middle class life be within reach. So we launched last April the first uh, uh, home savings account, the FHSA. There are now more than 750,000 young Canadians that have opened a first home savings account. I don't know about you, but if this has been open since last April and she's reciting the exact same numbers from two months ago, clearly this program is not working either. She st stated in both times it was 750,000 people who have signed up and are using this program. Nobody else has done it since last April or even since two months ago. Like, wh what is the point of this? And this is where the uh, confidence and no confidence kind of rolls in, in my opinion, as we start to get into the, uh, the questions from the media. And this is how they started off. Calvi Leon from the Toronto Star. Um, Minister Freeland, how do you feel about some of your colleagues believing you should be shuffled out of the finance portfolio in order to signal a major new direction for the government? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I absolutely take the point of view of our caucus, of my caucus colleagues, really, really seriously. Our government is our caucus and our government's policies need to be based on conversations within caucus. For me, my focus is on working hard to deliver for Canadians every single day. So that's where my focus is. It's on Canada and Canadians and working hard with all my caucus colleagues to deliver that. Do you still feel comfortable keeping your job as finance minister? I feel I have the support I need to do my job and to focus on what my job is, which is delivering for Canada and Canadians. Now, if you made it through all that gobbledygook, congratulations. I even cut down a whole bunch of nonsense that she was saying. But when you go back to the question, it was uh, basically saying your caucus doesn't support you in, in your role, at least some of them. Uh, how do you feel about that? She goes on a ramble about listening to Canadians and doing better. And then the second question is, do you want to phase out of your role? And she says, no, I feel like I have the support of my caucus. When clearly the other question was, you don't have support. And this is coming from the Toronto Star. And they actually had an article last week that they published saying, with no sign of Justin Trudeau leaving, some liberal MPs want major change in his cabinet. Now, they stated that uh, clearly what's happening is not working, said one Liberal MP, who, like the others quoted on this story, agreed to speak on the condition of anonymity. So, a bunch of wussies. But it goes on to say that several um, MPs actually were talked to, and one of them said, Freeland should definitely get moved. Uh, adding that hopefully Carney would be enticed to somehow join the team, possibly as a finance minister. Another MP said that uh, the obvious role for Carney, if he jumps into politics, uh, is for finance. He is light years ahead of anybody, Freeland included. Beyond that, the MP added, I certainly think that there are cabinet ministers that could be replaced by others who could do a better job. And the National Post also reported on this, uh, quoting the, uh, the Toronto Star article, 
by also adding, whereas another MP said that they were surprised her name was coming up, calling her very capable despite some mistakes. Now, I don't know if you want to call her track record just simple mistakes. And again, I'm not sure how credible this uh, Toronto Star article is, seeing as names aren't actually given. It, everybody wants to be secretive. But here we're going to have this uh, white knight here stand up for her and basically say everything that was being said is untrue and she has a full support, whereas the article says otherwise. Thank you. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, if I may, I am one of those caucus colleagues, so I'm happy to address this issue. And I can tell you, I talk to my caucus colleagues every single day, and we have complete confidence in Christian Freeland as a finance minister. You know, so this, these whispers in the shadows, and that's what they are, um, take them for what they're worth. It's, we are a team as a caucus, and you know what that means? It means we talk to each other, we work together, we uh, throw around ideas. But I can tell you unequivocally, we are united behind this person beside me, Christian Freeland, has done a great job, and there isn't a single person in my caucus who would uh, say anything to the uh, contrary. This man just said unequivocally, nobody in his caucus wants Freeland out of that position, and that these are just whispers in the shadow. Listen, you don't need to be a liberal member or a caucus member to say that she needs to go. Just listen to the public. A lot of individuals are unhappy with her in her position. They think that she should step down or move out of this uh, this role. And now that the new by-elections have been announced, even the media is talking about how important this is. And the uh, last reporter actually asks her about this. And this was her response. There are two upcoming federal by-elections this September, uh, following the loss in Toronto, St. Paul's. How critical are these by-elections? Every election matters. Uh, we have strong candidates in both of those ridings. Speaking for myself, and I am sure Jamie will agree, um, our MPs, our caucus, our government, we are really focused on delivering for Canada and Canadians. We're focused on delivering on housing. That's what we're here to talk about today. We're focused on delivering to make life more affordable. We're focused on delivering economic growth. So given that, uh, do you feel that uh, now is a time for your government to do a reset? I think what we need to do is be out there listening to Canadians. And I know that, you know, I was out knocking on doors in my own constituency yesterday. I've been talking to a lot of MPs. I know that that is what our caucus members are doing across the country. And that's our job, um, to go out into our communities, to hear from Canadians about how they're doing, what they want, what they need, and then to work hard on delivering that. That's what we need to do. That's what we're focused on doing. Now, I wish I was surprised by her answer of just giving her job description. But I'm not. As an MP, we know that that's your job to go out, to talk to the public, to find out what they want, what they need. But that wasn't the question. The question is, do you think it's time for a shuffle then or, or you know, a rejig of your party? But even the media, as I said, they're talking about how bad it's going to be if the liberals lose this. But even if they didn't lose it, I still don't see them winning. The other election will be in the Montreal riding of LaSalle, Imard Verdun, which was new in 2015 and has been liberal held ever since. It's former Justice Minister David Lametti's seat who announced earlier this year he was leaving politics after the upset at a by-election last month in Toronto's St. Paul's, which the Liberals lost. All eyes will be on what happens here. If they lose this seat, to call it after that, that St. Paul result it it led to the just this huge round of rebellion and pontificating about Trudeau's leadership was he going to step aside if they lose this seat that'll happen again and it'll be it'll be much worse and I'm sure he's right it will be but uh, there's no hope really I feel like for the Liberal Party at this point who knows miracles could happen but if they continuously have press conference like this and give answers like Freeland does or any other other liberal member I, I don't see them really getting anywhere but as always this is just my opinion love to hear from you guys so please let me know in the comment section below what you thought about all this 
And as always, I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.